Olga Nato was at home when the first confirmed COVID-19 positive case in Kenya was announced. Little did she know this pesky virus would have an even more virulent effect on her business. When we were starting, this totally interrupted um, everything because we had to close. I think I closed for like two, three weeks without doing anything. And then later on, I thought about, I saw on TV and I watched some um, videos abroad where this was already happening. So I saw people making cloth mats. Olga is a fashion designer and image consultant based in Kenya. With nothing much to do, she whiled away her time, social distancing as per the government's directive, while mapping out her next move. I actually didn't look at it as a business uh, aspect, but I thought I could do this to help the less fortunate. So I started doing, I, I called my people who are very also accepted to get back to work, to work on this. So we did a few, I started donating, I gave to my taxi drivers around here, the security guys. So I, I just, that is how I started. Then from there, I started dressing up and uh, matching my mask with my clothes. So that is how I started. And then, now business started afterwards. Being a well-known designer within the local fashion industry, it was just a matter of time before the calls started coming in. Uh, when I started making the African masks, they loved, so they asked for some. And then their friends also asked for some. So those are my clients. Majorly today would be corporate and um, just uh, normal people. I have... Clients who are already my clients who get to ask me that, Olga, I already have this outfit and I have, do you have a, a fabric that remained or if they got that fabric, they'll sh share with me to tell me, okay, I have this fabric, I want it to match my outfit, so can I send it so you make for me a mask that will match my outfit. Across town, Yvonne Kere, proprietor of Miss Kere Fashions, is very busy lately. This is what a typical day at work looks like, catering to working clients, stock taking, and creating online content for marketing. Just like Olga, Yvonne's business was gasping for dear life a few months ago. Her 10-year-old venture was reeling from the strangulation of the coronavirus. Locked airspaces and grounded planes made it impossible for her to stock her apparel and accessories business. She had to quickly rethink her business model. And adapting for us was Sitting down as a team, with my team, we sat down and thought, okay, there's a pandemic, okay, we are distressed, okay, we don't know what's happening next, but how can we adapt? How can we make sure that we at least get our basics? And for us, it was important was, how are we adapting to fit the market that we're in right now? And the market we're in right now was thinking about how to survive corona. So we just thought, what can we do that's different, that's unique, that's stylish? We came up with concepts. Um, we, did, we did a prototype of, of, of a scarf. So that this exact scarf, it was somehow similar, but we just, you know, played around with ideas and uh, came up with this scarf. And the masks have been a hit. She gets most of her clients on social media. Occasionally, customers like Milka Wamboi walk in. Milka has been patronizing this retail store for a few years now. Why I like them is you can wear them as a scarf and when you feel you've forgotten your scarf, you just pull it up as a mask usually forgetful of my mask, so this is a good idea. When I remember, I just pull it up. Mm -hmm. And I can as well put my mask inside here for extra protection in case I'm going to very crowded places like the market. It's stylish. Um, I'm wearing a black blouse, suits with the floral. Next day, I can choose a different outfit that blends with this. So they're quite versatile. They're very light and breathable. So. Wearing a mask doesn't mean you have to look like you have, you're waiting for COVID. You look stylish with COVID. The use of masks has been credited for helping to slow down the spread of the virus in Japan, South Korea, China, and parts of Europe. The World Health Organization says droplets emitted by people when coughing, talking, or sneezing may contain the virus, which can remain in the air for several hours. With no end in sight, these accessories have now become 2020's wardrobe staple. The pandemic has relegated face masks firmly in fashion history books. Featuring prominently in all major fashion events this year, entrepreneurs, artists, and luxury fashion houses have taken the chance to merge fashion with function. 
Prada, YSL, Gucci, and Balenciaga have started production. We already have MaskClub.com, which offers monthly mask subscriptions. DIY tutorials, social media, and the internet have removed barriers to entry. Online retailers are well stocked with showstoppers ranging from avant garde masterpieces to graphic and even whimsical designs. These masks have even become a vehicle of self expression. In Kenya, they have offered a branding opportunity, and companies have not squandered the chance to make their mark. Corporates form a big portion of Olga's clientele. Uh, the more they order, the more uh, the masks that we produce uh, per day. But normally, just about a hundred a day. Well, maybe between uh, 200 to 300. This will be standard cost just because I want to please my clients and I want my clients to feel that when they come to me, they can get variety and they can get um, what they want without any extra uh, charge. This changes when you have a big order. Example, I had some corporates that made much, 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 um, a lot more bigger orders than others, so I have to review their course. Yvonne has also managed to entice her share of corporate clients, including an airline. However, it has not been smooth sailing. So it is a big transition from importing to manufacturing, because uh, the, in the manufacturing, it's a whole new ball game. Importing, it's a ready-made product. You just come and you look for the market. But manufacturing, you have to look at the quality of the product. You have to look for the quality. Um, people who can actually make that product for you. So for us, finding tailors, finding fabric, and also fabric, a lot of fabric comes, is, in, is imported. And it comes here in, Europe, here in, in CBD and also in Italy. And Italy was closed when we started doing our business. So it was a bit tricky for us because finding a variety of fabric was hard, but we kind of maneuvered around it. Her three-ply masks are made from chiffon and silk material. Although cloth masks are accepted and common, the government has recommended the single-use surgical mask and the more effective N95 masks for more protection. Many Nairobians buy them on the streets. Actually, on an easy material, what one of according to maybe fashion, mtu anataka kitu imeandikuwa jina yake, mtu anataka kitu imeandikuwa kitu poa, maybe Nairobi, ama flag ya Kenya representing our country. That's the reason, main reason, neza sema, what one atumia this type of mask. What one meza kuchukulia hii kitu kwa serious? Uh, on uh, pandayangu ya opinion, because uh, to corona kikam, we used to sell this a lot, but right now, surgical is what is on sale. To know that is the kuliko the the material uh, uh, mask. Sana sana indio anambebaga sana sababu indio doctori mepitisha. Lakini ingine, ingine unajua tena i inaokoa pesa. Lakini yendangi sana. Concerns have been raised on the handling of the masks being sold on the street. Milka wants a bit more than the streets can offer. And there are so many people selling, so you're not sure who is selling the genuine product. I can wash this at home and I'm sure it's clean. Ask, add an extra surgical mask for extra protection and still cover my chest and blend with different outfits. Men are also getting on trend. Lennox Kimathi is one of them. I'll introduce you with my wife at this place, so I scarves. According to a market analysis report by Grandview Research, the global disposable face mask market size exceeded a value of 74.90 billion US dollars in the first quarter of 2020. This study did not include other entrepreneurs making cloth masks like Olga and Yvonne. Ministry of Health cautions that the COVID-19 pandemic has not yet peaked. Masks are therefore likely to remain in high demand. Yvonne has a word of advice for those brimming with explosions of creativity. First, just find out research. You know, for me, I've got, I've got people who've come and asked me, advice, like, how did you do your mask? How, you know, how is it done? People, people have researched online. So it's very important to find what do you want, what do you want to achieve? Do you want to make a fashionable mask, a practical mask or both? Or who's your target market? So for me, my target market was women when I started. It was women and women um, 
who love fashion. So they wanted to be stylish, something that is um, different and it's unique. That was my angle. And when I, with that angle, it gave me the idea of what we want to do. As far as Olga is concerned, safety and style can straddle each other. COVID is here to stay. So I think it's still um, upon us to protect each other. We still have to wear a mask in whichever place we are. I think just get what works for you. Make it a fashionable statement so that you don't feel like um, masks are mandatory, but make it be part of your dressing. So that, I think, can make somebody feel a lot more better when you're using masks. Although constantly wearing a face mask may need some getting used to, donning a piece of art might be the encouragement needed to make it a permanent fixture on people's faces, at least until the threat of contagion becomes distant history. Crystal Onkel, KTN News.